to the real world. What's good, everyone? This is DJ's Raw and Cut Truth, giving you the raw content that you deservedly need. And let's talk about Jackson State and Deion Sanders. Now, their team won 53 0 against Edward Waters, an NAIA school that's going to be Division II. And um, I've seen the reactions, I've seen the uh, hating. On both sides. Let me tell you this. In the game, you could tell that Jackson State could have scored more points. They left a lot of points on the board. They shut them out. And what people are failing to realize is that this roster in the spring will be totally different in the fall. Players who have played this fall or played high school were not eligible to play in the spring. Matter of fact, uh, uh, the only signees that were able to play in the spring were, I think it was just a few JUCO, not the uh, noticeable transfers, but a few of the JUCO players like Deshaun Warren, the number one corner. And I see why he was number one in JUCO. They didn't go to his side that much, and he shut down the side of a field. He's the real deal. And then Isaiah Bolden from Florida State that transferred played. He did his thing and should have had a kick return touchdown, but he tripped his feet. Um... Tony Gray from Central Florida, a big offensive lineman he played. But when I show you this recruiting list, you'll see that a ton of players did not touch that field. This is how talented this team will be in the fall. I talked to a couple of friends of mine who are very invested in watching and, and just observing the games of HBCUs and sports. And they were telling me, can you believe that no, don't disrespect what I'm about to say, but they told me, could you believe that this is pretty much Jackson State's B team? I don't care what level of football you play against. We beat somebody 53 to zero. And these may not be the, the main starters in the fall. Now, I think some will start. But even in Dion's press conference, he was talking about the players are competing very hard because they're trying to compete for a position just to see the field in the fall. So here's a signing day list. As you see in the number 13 pocket passing quarterback, Shadir Sanders, four star. He's got a good arm. He's very accurate. He's a winner. He has very high IQ, just like his father. Now, Jalen Jones, and I hope I said his name. Jalen Jones was the quarterback. Um, 6'4 kid, 220, strong. He can run. He's a better running runner than Shador. But there were a couple of throws. Um, like the one he missed on with Corey Reed. There was two big throws that he missed that Shadur could hit. Now, I'm not at the practices or at the um, behind the scenes of Jackson State, but I know based on film, Shadur can hit those. And I won't be surprised if Shadur starts next year. Now, if Jalen Jones can use these couple games to improve, you never know. But what I saw, Shadur is definitely an upgrade. And not because he's Dion's son. He has talent. Because you know Shines would be like, 
oh, Shadur is starting because he's Dion's son and it was given to him. That's that's Cap. Uh, Shadur Sanders fills a void that the team needs. They need a quarterback that's accurate. Uh, now, Jalen Jones did hit 18 out of, I believe, 20 passes, which is a good percentage, but he only had 187 yards. And he didn't hit downfield as accurately. That will be all fixed with Shadur. And the only reason why Shadur is not playing, like I said earlier in this video, high school players cannot play in the spring because they played in the fall. Um, so anybody, high school, college, or even JUCO, if they played this fall, this past fall, they cannot play in the spring. Dewan Warren, he didn't play in the fall, so he's able to play in the spring. And as you see in the top right there, Trevante Rucker, he cannot play in the spring, but he will be in the fall. He's a Under Armour All-American receiver from Florida, speedster. He's definitely going to cause havoc in the FCS and HBCUs. Devontae Gardner, once committed to Florida, who is a big kid, very long, long arms, played against good competition out there in Orlando, Florida. So he's battle tested way better than his ranking, by the way. Um, decommitted from the Gators, Florida Gators, that is, to go to Jackson State. You know, he'll have something to say for a roster spot. Brazon Ross, he'll be there in the fall. Ala Brown, explosive receiver from Georgia. He's going to get looks. Look, I'm just reading it down the line. These are D1 players playing in the FCS next year. Charles Armstrong, big kid, had an offer from Georgia, uh, Minnesota, and other D1 schools. Baron Hobson, another kid who is better than his three-star rating uh, from Leesburg, Georgia. Thumper, can coverage in space, so he's a balanced linebacker. And he, I'm expecting him to get ample amounts of playing time. I think he'll make an impact. Herman Smith, Mr. Do-It-All. And most do-it-all players, like a Herman Smith, they could play in a slot, could play running back, could play receiver. They're a little bit smaller. This kid is 190. He's probably 200 right now because I'm assuming he's working out. 5'11", 190. Rasheed Lyles. Juco number 16, Juco D tackle in America. Uh, Chedarius Carr, number 23 D tackle in the country from East Mississippi Junior College. I'm reading down the roster names, and you see a three star in FCS is like a four star, and a four star in FCS is definitely like a five star. So I don't want to hear any of this, oh, they're just playing in NIA school. They're not all that. Let's say, because I know um, Jackson State plays Mississippi Valley State this week. And let's say they handle business and beat them. Let's say they play uh, against Grambling State and it's a closer game and it's a win and they barely beat Grambling State. You're going to see, see people on social media say that uh, this team ain't all that, this team ain't this, this team can never be relevant. They're going to say it, not knowing, as I'm reading this list, that more people, more players will play this fall and it, the team dynamic will look totally different. Do you know that uh, Jackson State had, I think, about five transfers in a week? because they know the players that are coming in. It's getting real out here, man. Now I'm gonna read more of this list because I'm, I'm going to show everyone the people that are coming out. I told you about Isaiah Bolden. He's playing Florida State transfer. Um, 
Mill John Jor. Uh, he will be coming in in the fall. Transfer from Florida International, 6'6", 320. You know he's going to be moving people around in the FCS. Uh, Jarvius Selman, Mississippi State transfer, will be showing up in the fall. Aubrey Miller, University of Missouri. Transfer, he'll be in the fall. Shiloh, who's not playing right now, Shiloh Sanders. He got to play a couple of snaps in South Carolina. He's battle-tested. Every time I seen uh, South Carolina play in the SEC, Shiloh was getting snaps. He played uh, slot corner, outside corner, safety. They put him all over the place. Very versatile, has extremely high IQ, can hit, a powerful hitter. I already mentioned Tony Gray is playing already. From uh, He came from the University of Central Florida. Uh, Keith Corbin is already playing from the University of Houston. Niles Grady from Tennessee, 6'4", 230. A uh, new breed of linebacker with speed, thumper, but can cover good enough. The list goes on. Abdul Malik McClain. This dude's a beast from USC, transferred from USC of Southern California, 6'4", 245, outside linebacker. I'm reading these names, and I'm showing you that do not underestimate Jackson State in the fall. Don't do it. If you're going to do it, that's uh, you, you're going to be looking stupid. What Jackson State is doing right now is working out the kinks, making sure that they work on their fundamentals. Dennis Thurman had an interview. He, he pretty much illustrated what the main goal for Jackson State is in the spring. He said, of course, they want to win every game and win the swag, but the main important thing is to work on their fundamentals. So when they played against um, Edward Waters. Edward Waters treated that game like it's their championship. Jackson State was just working on their weaknesses. That's all they were doing. They probably could have hit 90 points against that team if they wanted to. But they was working on their weaknesses and it showed. So I'm excited to see what Deion Sanders is going to pull off with Jackson State. Um, one thing I'm happy about is that he's really changing the game of HBCUs. I don't know if you're seeing this, but other HBCU schools are now offering D1 caliber players at a high level now. From North Carolina a and to Grambling to Perivia a and the list goes on, Texas Southern, many schools. They're stepping their game up. And that's all I ever wanted as a as a fan of uh, HBCU teams. I, I, I always wanted them to force the system to level the playing field. And the best way to do it is to try to recruit top-notch players and not worry about if they're getting rejected, if a player said he wants to go to a bigger school, don't worry about it. Because some kids are real. Some kids are like these kids that um, committed to Jackson State. They want to change the system. They want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. And if Jackson State, this how, this is how Jackson State can take it to the next level. They got to have a couple players, I say about three, make it in the NFL in one class at least. If If that happens... And I'm only saying one class in the same year. If that happens, kids are taking a uh, look at it and say, hey, I don't have to go to Alabama, exert all this energy in tough practices and have my body beat up when I could just go to a Jackson State. And yes, I'm sure their practices are tough. But you know how it is, man. We go to these schools like Alabama. It's like a freaking... It's freaking like a... It's, it's like a military uh, compound or something like you just going to boot camp 
and and you go to HBCU, it's like a family. Yeah, it's a tough practice, but it's a brotherhood. You be around people who are like you. So shout out to Deion Sanders, man. Don't let the haters keep you down. Shout out to the players. Shout out to everyone involved in the in trying to make HBCUs a popular thing and level in the playing field because that's what the most important part is, is to do that. Peace and bless to everybody. Welcome to the real world.